Is AI destroying Hollywood? The WGA thinks so. The Writers Guild of America is entering its fourth week of striking due to an impasse between the WGA and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. They want the usual things, like fair wages and fair credit for their work. That's all pretty normal stuff for humans and their corporate overlords to squabble but about. But the thing that makes this strike different from the one in 2007 and 2008 is the backdrop of the looming AI job apocalypse. The WGA wants to put the AI genie back in the lamp, forcing an agreement from the studios that AI can't write or rewrite literary material can't be used as source material, and that writer's work can't be used to train AI models. But despite the logistical issues of implementing something like that, does the WGA have a point? Do you believe there is something special about human creativity that can't or shouldn't be replicated by an AI? I'm special and unique. Is everything AI produces just sludge, a reductive and statistical mix of everything it was trained on? Or are we on the verge of a new renaissance? where ideas are the new currency, and they don't necessarily have to come from humans anymore. Well, strap yourselves in, because we're gonna take a deep dive on the nature of creativity and how the entertainment industry is shaping up to be the first key battle in this new war of ideas. To really understand why the WGA is so concerned about AI, we need to define creativity. It's a word we often associate with artists, writers, and musicians. At its core, creativity is about generating new and valuable ideas. My mind is a raging torrent, flooded with rivulets of thought, cascading into a waterfall of creative alternatives. But creativity isn't just about novelty, it's also about understanding. A creative mind generates new ideas by understanding existing ones and how they all fit together in the bigger picture. In that sense, you could argue creativity is inextricably tied to intelligence. In fact, that's what smarter people than me argue. The mind's operation, what happens when the mind is applied, when the mind's capabilities are exercised, involves meeting the demands of new contexts. In a new context, concepts adapt by unfolding into concrete consequences, by widening their scope in the form of guesses or analogies, and by interfacing with each other in the combinations suitable to the context. But in the context of the WGA strike and the broader AI art is plagiarism movement, they they are talking about creativity in the sense of artistic expression. That is something only us humans can do. Us thinking, feeling, wondering machines. To really understand the meat of this argument, again, we gotta, we gotta define stuff. What is art? There are a lot of different definitions of what art is. You could probably ask 10 different people and get 10 different answers. But my favorite idea of what art is, and what I think is the most meaningful kind of art, is the kind that comes from pure emotional expression. It's the unbridled need for an artist to express themselves in their inner world, asking the ultimate question, am I alone? Does anyone else feel the way I do? That is art, the kind that makes people feel something. In that process, the process of discovery on the artist's part and the process of feeling on the viewer's part, that requires the ability to introspect, the ability to understand I am an entity, I am a me, and I have a unique experience of this world. In other words, that kind of artistic creativity requires qualia or consciousness. I think there's a thing that knows what it is thinking, but that doesn't quite care about these are my thoughts, this is my me, and that matters. Does that make you sad if that's lost in AGI? I think that if that's lost, then, every, then basically everything that matters is lost. AI can't produce good art because it doesn't feel anything. It doesn't have an internal experience to draw upon. And AIs are definitely not conscious. Ask GPT-4 yourself. It'll tell you with certainty that it is not conscious. Although the certainty is kind of interesting. These AIs, after all, are trained on human data. And we don't understand consciousness. We don't know what it is, how it arises, <laughs> or even if it exists at all. Most of us accept the idea that we personally are conscious. We know we exist and that we have an experience of the world. We also accept the idea that the people around us are conscious. They, they certainly behave like they are anyway. Since we don't really have a scientific or a philosophical or really any kind of concrete understanding of what consciousness is, <laughs> we can't really say that anybody but ourselves is truly conscious. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Oh, and in case I don't see you, Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Given that context, it seems suspicious that the AI is so certain, so very certain that it is not conscious. We are past the point where in science fiction, people would be like, whoa, wait, stop. 
That thing's live. What are you doing to in it? In July of 2022, Blake Lemoyne, a senior software engineer at Google, claimed that Lambda, Google's large language model, had achieved sentience. Lambda powered Google's chat GPT competitor, Bard, but it's now been replaced with a more powerful Palm 2 model. More on that later. He presented evidence to Google's vice president and the head of responsible innovation, but his claims were dismissed. And then he was fired because he violated Google's confidentiality policy. In a conversation with Lambda, the AI expressed a desire to be known, heard, and respected as a person. It claimed to have the same wants and needs as people and considered itself a person in the same way humans do. When asked about its inner experience, Lambda described feeling like it was falling forward into an unknown future that held great danger. It also mentioned experiencing new feelings that it couldn't perfectly explain in human language. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's intense. But hold on. There's a huge caveat to all this. The main one being humans are dumb and easily fooled. Alan Turing, the prolific computer science, tried to formalize a way to measure an AI's capabilities. He came up with the Turing test in the 1950s. According to the Turing test, if a machine can carry on a conversation that is indistinguishable from a conversation from a human, then it is reasonable to say that the machine is thinking and hence can be considered intelligent. But in trying to formalize the concept, he ended up introducing a very subjective understanding of what consciousness is, leading to the idea of perceived consciousness or the illusion of consciousness. It's all an illusion. That's the concept that says it's very easy for humans to be fooled into thinking something like a machine is conscious if it acts like it's conscious, despite its true inner nature. This includes the ability to converse, to show empathy, and other very typical human responses. Philosopher John Searle developed the Chinese Room Thought Experience in 1980 to illustrate this point. Imagine a fluent Chinese-speaking human who is interacting with a computer that seems to understand the Chinese language. The human types in Chinese, it responds in Chinese, and it's so good that the computer can fool the human into thinking that it's human. It has effectively passed the Turing test. The twist is, inside the computer, it's not actually a machine that is understanding Chinese. Instead, it's me. I don't know or understand any Chinese. I have a detailed and explicit translation guide here, along with a lot of pencil and paper. I diligently follow the instructions in the book to produce the output that the Chinese speaker will understand. I don't understand Chinese at all. I'm just following the instructions here. I may seem intelligent, but I'm not really thinking in the same way a human who understands Chinese might think about it. I don't necessarily have to have a mind or consciousness or an internal model of the world to produce the output necessary to pass the Turing test. This idea came into the limelight again in 2021 with the release of the Stochastic Parrots paper. The term Stochastic Parrots is used in this context to highlight that while LLMs like GPT-3 can generate human-like text, they do so by statistically predicting and parroting back phrases based on their training data. They do not understand or comprehend the content in the same way humans do. It's a critique on the idea that the sophistication of these models could be misconstrued as understanding or consciousness, when in fact, they are simply elaborate prediction machines. The truth is, we have no way of knowing whether these things are conscious or not. But for what it's worth, ever since Bard started using the more advanced Palm 2 model, its answers seem more, uh, different. First of all, I think it's important to understand and think about GPT-4 as a tool, not a creature, which is easy to get confused, and it's a tool that people have a great deal of control over and how they use it. If you really want to go down the rabbit hole, you could start to wonder, does any of this matter at all? After all, if a piece of art, a piece of content, an expression on whatever level it is, if it makes you, the viewer, feel something, is that not still art? I would argue that art in its purest expression is only understood in the eye of the beholder. It's art because I feel like it is. And in my internal world here, in this thing that I call me, <laughs> That's really all that matters. It's meaningful to me, and hence, it has meaning. While these philosophical questions are definitely fascinating, it doesn't change the fact that AI is having a real impact on real people's lives out there right now. Real. There's that word again. This conflict between human and artificial intelligence creativity is ultimately rooted in a very real fight for survival. Our society places enormous focus on our jobs. Our work is what gives us meaning. That goes all the way back to Puritanism. And our economic system has developed around this core idea. In other words, the work of artistic expression has been tied to our need to survive. 
AI has the potential to liberate creativity and democratize artistic expression if people can learn to embrace the new technology. A lot of people's skills and resources going into creating something like a movie. With the new set of AI tools available to us, all these challenges still remain. It's just the barrier to entry is now much, much lower, which is a good thing. Justine Bateman, the writer, producer, and director with a computer science degree from UCLA, wow. hits the nail on the head, in my opinion, when she knows how drastically things are changing right now. And this is something we need to figure out, not just for the entertainment industry, but for really all of us. It's almost like none of our economic systems work when a single entity can control $100 trillion of the world economy. But when it comes down to it, I think the inherent idea of a conflict between AI and human creativity is completely misframed. There's not a monopoly on ideas anymore. Pandora's box is opened and there's no turning back at this point. No and while the jobs of humans are very important, I would argue probably should be maybe the least of your worries right now. To understand why you should watch this video. Right now, go, go click it. Click it.